Hey everyone, uh, Murray Fife here, uh, your local Microsoft Dynamics 365 Global Black Belt. <clears throat> and today I thought I'd show something that I've been working on. It's pretty cool and uh, it's a nifty way that we can automate some of the setup that we have to do within Dynamics as we're going through going through sort of data setup and new data entry in the system. So the scenario that I have here is um, got a, a a company and they configure cell phone towers and they've got a number of cell phone towers that they need to manage but every time they go out and uh, create a cell phone uh, location within asset management then they also want to track the inventory that's associated with that uh, cell phone tower so they need a warehouse and a uh, associated with the site and then also whenever they go out and uh, perform maintenance at the uh, site then they want to have a parent uh, maintenance asset that they can work from so if you look at the configuration I've got here then within asset management we have a location which is our cell tower if I look at the cell tower then there's a uh, site and also a warehouse associated with it that has the same name or the same naming convention as the functional location. And then below that, we have our asset that's associated with this. And this is the cell tower site as well. So this is a general sort of asset that we work with. And it also has the same naming nomenclature as the functional location. So we have this hierarchy that every time we want to go out and uh, uh, configure and track a site within uh, asset management, then we want to want to have this consistent sort of structure. Now, so, so that's that's fine, but every time we go out and we create a new functional location, then we have to go out and uh, create the new warehouse uh, and then link it back to the functional location. Then we have to create the asset and then link that back to the functional location as well in order to create this hierarchy. So this is a lot of manual work and we were thinking, or I was thinking, how can we uh, simplify this and make this a little bit easier? So there's a couple of things that that we're going to use here. Rather than going and doing uh, X++ coding and doing things like that, then what we're going to use is we're going to use Power Automate. But the... Um, the normal uh, connector that we have within for Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations does not capture the uh, add, modify, or delete events. So we can't we can't do it, really use Power Automate uh, in the traditional sense, or or at least we didn't used to be able to. There's a new feature which has been around for a little bit. It's not not super old, but there's this new thing called a data data event catalog. So this is part of the business events catalog sort of uh, functionality. But if we look at this, then, uh, then what we can do is we can see that every entity that's in the system actually has a corresponding uh, data event for it, which is either the create, delete, or update. So what we can do is we can enable all of these. And what this is doing in the background is this is going to enable the virtual entities in Dataverse for, uh, for these, uh, um, for these uh, CRUD operations to be performed so that then we can access them and use them. What that means is that if I go out and if I have a Power Automate flow that's here, then now what I can do is I can capture these events so in this case, when a new functional location is created, is added, and this could be added, modified, deleted, and so forth. And then I can get the virtual event table that's here, and then this is going to be the trigger. So what this is doing is this is going to go out and say, when a new functional location is added, then go and run this Power Automate flow. So we're not creating any code in order to do this. So because I've got this, then also what I can do is I can go and search through the locations and then I can pass this information out. Then I can also go out and access other items. So for example, if I wanted to create a new warehouse, then there's a 
update row within Dataverse, which is for this uh, functional location being created. And I have all of the fields that are available to me for the uh, warehouse available here in the update. So what I've done here is I've created a flow that says whenever I create a new functional location, then go out and create the warehouse and also go and create the uh, parent location. But I wanted to be a little bit more clever and I wanted to go out and use Teams to start getting some interaction because we may not want this automatically to be performed. And also this is just a, 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 a pretty neat way that we can go out and and do this. So what I'm going to do is to show show this in action. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. And then I've got our teams showing up here. So if I go over to my functional locations, then what I can do is I can say that I want to create a new a new record. This is going to be NG70104. And this is going to be cell tower. Or so that I've got the same naming convention. It's going to be have a parent location here, and then also this is going to be a cell tower. Now the uh, functional location type is important because I'm only going to create the warehouse and I'm only going to create the uh, uh, the parent asset if I have a functional location type of cell tower. So now I'm going out and I'm creating the record. For this, I haven't got any triggers in the back. I'm not running any X++ code, but the Power Automate is now going to run in the background and we can actually see this running if I want to. And I can go into my flow. And then we can see that this is now running in the background. And it's gone through and it's asking me, do I want to create a warehouse? And over here in the uh, Teams, I've got an interactive um, conversation going here with the agent. So do I want to create a new uh, a warehouse for this uh, functional location? I'm saying, yeah. I do, and I could add some comments if I want. And then this is going to run through and it's creating the warehouse for me. As it's going through and doing this, then it's also going to link that warehouse to the functional location that we'll see in a second. Now, also, this has to have a parent asset associated with it. So do I want to create that as well? I'm going to say, yeah, I do. So I want to, I want to have both of these ran. It'll actually check to see if the warehouse already exists or the functional, uh, the asset already exists. And it'll ask me this if I really, if I need to. But if I return back here to uh, look at all my functional locations, then now we'll see that I have uh, I have a new functional location that I just created. And then when I look at those details, it's gone out and it's created a new site and a new warehouse for me. Also, it's created a parent, uh, a main asset for me that I can go out and track. And if I go and update the status and say that I'm going to start installing on this and activating it, then also what I can do is I can now go and go into my asset view and see down here in my locations, I now have a new cell phone tower site and an asset below it that then I can start creating work orders against within the system. So this is uh, this is neat and it's it's a uh, a different way that we can create integrations now because of the virtual entities within Dataverse and then these triggers that are associated with it. So this was a, a quick demonstration, a quick quick view onto how we can do this, and I hope this was interesting. If you have any questions, then uh, just uh, uh, ping me on LinkedIn. My uh, profile is Murray Fife, M U R R A Y F I F E. Or you can find me on a number of other social media platforms. But uh, this is a just a, a quick overview of something that I've been working on that I think is useful and a different way that we can go and do development.